Okay, I think we're going to get started, guys. Um, thank you all for coming back. I know that we have most of our committee members here tonight. Um, I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving holiday. I certainly did. I had way too much turkey, and I burned it off putting up Christmas lights all weekend. But, um, but uh, we're going to get right into it. Tonight is the final night for us as a committee. <clears throat> and um, tonight, tonight's the night that you're going to be making uh, your recommendation for the, to the school board. So the agenda is to, we have a new uh, option F based on feedback. So there's six options here for us as a starting point for tonight, uh, leading, to a, leading to a recommendation. Um, before we get into the recommendation process, we're going to do a process of nominating options to see if anybody, uh, to, to, to it's a, it's think of nomination as selecting candidates for the recommendation. So that's going to be the first step. Um, and when we get to the nomination process, you'll have the opportunity to nominate an option with specific adjustments. If you think that in a, you like an option, but you do like certain parts of another option, you could we could always you could always nominate an option, an amended option tonight. Um, and then finally, we'll just capture any additional comments from you, any thoughts that you may want to share with the board as we uh, when we do present to the board in February. So. A quick summary, as you recall, last, last committee meeting you did an option evaluation exercise where you, where you um, scored on how well each option addressed the, the objectives and the considerations. Um, and um, we have the results here on this next slide. So this kind of shows the, the results of the entire, of, of the sum of all of the group's work and um, the work that you guys did. As you can see, As you can see, no option um, is perfect, which we have always said from the start, and no option is going to be perfect. There's going to be pros and cons with any option. Um, but uh, several of them scored pretty high. 18 was the highest score that any option could have uh, could have uh, obtained. And as you can see, option C had the most, the, the, the highest total. When I summed the total score for each one, it had a, so a total of 86, and um, the others varied varied uh, off of that, but option C did have the highest number of, of votes, uh, or not votes, but the highest score as a result of this exercise. Um, we only have one other update that I wanted to give you tonight. Um, we do have, uh, transportation has been doing some research regarding planning block 30, and you, as you recall, there's been a lot of discussion about planning block 30 and, and the, the safety going on Honeygo and turning left on Joppa. Uh, and as this was a, uh, a planning block that was being considered to go to the new school and several options, and um, and it was a very a vocal community, and so we've done some research just to to look at it, and we have Mr. West here to provide some uh, some some of his research and some of his findings. He did do an additional look at it. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. My name is Kenny West. I'm the assistant director of transportation. Um, at the last meeting, meeting number five, we were asked to look at the intersection of Sunny Shade Court and Honeywell Boulevard. So the concern from parents was that the bus would not have enough time uh, to turn right onto Honeygo and then make the left onto Joppa Road. So we did perform an assessment. Um, I personally took a bus out myself during the time that the afternoon bus would be delivering the students. So I was there at the same time that the bus was. Um, I was there for approximately one hour watching the traffic pattern and turning onto Honeywell Boulevard. What I found was that there were significant gaps in traffic, so there was no time during that uh, period where it was not comfortable to pull the bus out onto Honeywell Boulevard. Um, the vehicle was able to reach the speed limit before you approach Joppa Road. So given that, I believe it was 1,200 feet, um, there really isn't a concern with the bus not being able to uh, obtain speed appropriate for Honeywell Boulevard. So at that point, it is really no consequence to turn left or to turn right. So the vehicle can make a right to go to Chapel Hill or make a left to go to the new facility. I also um, requested from the county government accident stats. So I would just read the response that the county government sent uh, to me. We pulled the accident records for the two above intersections and found that these intersections are operating 
at an excellent safety level when compared to other similar intersections. That was their response as far as accidents. Um, I did also ask them to look at traffic control devices. The response with traffic control devices is the intersection at Sunnyshade Court and Honeygrove does not meet the federal regulations to allow a traffic device to be placed there. The other response was that they were not in favor of putting a traffic control device on that stretch of Honeygrove because the exact opposite effect would, would um, take place, meaning motorists have a habit of speeding up once they leave a red light, so they actually are concerned that their, their speed, the speeding would get worse if they were to divide um, uh, Honeygo Boulevard with traffic control devices. So they did not want to um, investigate doing that. Finally, I was asked to inquire about um, traffic violations that have been issued. That comes from a different department, so I am happy to do that. I don't have that information yet. And I was also asked to look at um, requesting a survey for cameras. And I can also do that as well. However, based on all of our information, um, again, it, it is not a transportation concern coming out onto Honey Go to turn left or to right, left or right on Joppa Road. Thank you, Mr. West. Any questions? And um, in, in looking at that, that, that planning block, the, the buses already turned right out onto Honey Go to get to Chapel Hill. So it's a matter of just continuing to Chapel Hill or going left on Joppa at the light. So, um, but thank you, Mr. West, for that information. I wanted to, since we are in the process of nominating options for recommendations and then, and then finally uh, you determining a recommended plan for, to, to bring forth to the, um, to the superintendent, I want to just review the objectives and criteria one final time. So the objectives of this boundary study um, is to have a community-based um, and comprehensive study to reduce overcrowding in the region, to create viable, successful boundaries to effectively utilize the added capacity at the new Northeast Area Elementary School and other schools involved in the study, and to support diversity among schools that reflect the community and the school system. Um, there is an additional option that has been drafted tonight, as I mentioned, option F. Um, and option F starts with option C as a starting point, and it, and it puts um, um, the same boundary configurations as options D and E for Seven Oaks and Gunpowder that were incorporated into this. And the thoughts with some of those were to, is if you look at the boundary for Seven Oaks and options F, a D, E, and F, you'll see the Seven Oaks boundary stretches a little bit further north to try to, to, try to pull some students that are in, in really close proximity to Seven Oaks, keep them into Seven Oaks. But in trade, the gunpowder zone stretches further, further west into the current Seven Oaks boundary. And I know that some of you think that's favorable and some of you uh, have indicated to me that, that that's not um, optimal because they're driving past um, Seven Oaks to get to gunpowder. So that certainly is um, up for discussion and uh, uh, for you as a committee. The other adjustment that was made off of option C to create option F is planning block 30 was put in, was, is put in the Chapel Hill Elementary School in that particular option. So it's just a little variation of some of the options that just for you to, to, to have a look at to see a, a different um, configuration of zones as sort of a hybrid of certain of some of the, some of the different zones and options that, that have been considered up to this point. Um, and this is what I was talking about. I have the map here. This is the area that was added. This, is, this was added into Seven Oaks. It looks like a small area, but there's a lot of population there. Um, and, um, and then this area to the east, to the west, was in, instead of this coming into gunpowder, gun, the old gunpowder zone and some of the older options came across like this. And then in this option, Seven Oaks comes up a little bit further north, and then this feeds into gunpowder. So again, there's pros and cons with any, with any particular configuration. Uh, nothing's going to be perfect, per se. Say again? Um, um, let me get a, let's see, a microphone. Oh, here we go. I just wanted to know who came up with option F. 
Option F was one that we as um, staff and, um, and consultants looked at evaluating the, the feedback and, the, and so that was one that, that we have generated um, internally uh, based, in based on ongoing feedback and such. Are there any other questions about option F or any uh, comments? I know that you had made, had told me some of, some of your concerns about it. Did Mike, did you? At least for me, because where my street is, you have us going to gunpowder, which makes no sense. You have us going an even further distance, and from what I understand, our school buses have no air conditioning and limited heat, so that's my concern as a parent. Okay. Which makes no sense for us to put the foot in option F as per, because North Lynn Road, there's probably, what, 30 or 40 houses on the street, and then you have maybe some tucked back in the nook. That just doesn't make any sense for any of those kids to go to gunpowder. You have us traveling further, and our street's very small anyway, and we have a congestion issue with a lot of school buses, so that mm -hmm. would just add to the problem. Okay, we had another comment over here from another committee member. I guess, I guess I had a question for this lady here who was just talking. Which way does your school bus go? Does it go seven courts or does it come around Hines? So she, um, here, oh, um, from what I understand, she travels, she comes up Parker Road or She's coming from Joppa Road because she picks up on one side of our street, and then she comes down, she hits Hartford Road and turns around on Alberta, comes back up, and sometimes she, she turns around over at the Chinese Church. Do you know where the pop shop is on Northland Road? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the second house from there. So she does one side and then does the rest, and then hits the school, if that makes any sense. Down seven courts, or? Back, oh, keep going back around yes, Northwind. She, yes, she's only on Northwind, and then she goes to the traffic circle and then down to the school. Okay, because just to clarify, I know the area really well. Instead of going around the traffic circle all the way, they would just go um, one, two, three exits and then up to gunpowder. So it's really not that much further, I don't think, um, if you actually look at the mileage. So that was just my question, which way did they go? Yeah, I would imagine that they would travel down down this road, and then uh, I believe this is Klaus Meyer. And uh, Klaus, Klaus Meyer um, would come across here, but that doesn't connect. You can't come up here. I don't think it connects, so you have to go past. And, and when, you drive, when you're driving to head into Bel Air, there's a big open farm field on the backside of gunpowder, so when you're headed this direction, you'll see a big open field and then gunpowder sits on the opposite end of that field. So they'd pass that field and then turn left is, is how I'd imagine they'd the, the most immediate route to get to gunpowder. So we're basically trading that little section closest to the school for what's down Northwind, unfortunately, in this option. That's, that's right. And, there, and there's a, a lot of students in this particular planning block. Um, you have, uh, let's see, about 34. Yeah, it's a townhome community. Yeah, so about 34 students in there. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, uh, it was it was somewhat of a balanced swap on those, and um, um, and it was just looking at more proximity, not to say that it's a perfect configuration. Um, Mr. West, did you have a comment? I just wanted to put out for consideration the difference in the area. It is a a little bit of different wrap. We're talking three to five minutes. It is, it is a, a dense, densely populated area, so to move students from one section to another, we're speaking a matter of minutes. It's a, not a great distance. Okay. And yeah, the thought was to try to get some stu the, these students in close proximity to Seven Oaks that potentially walk, could potentially walk to the school. Um, so that was just kind of the, the, the rationale behind that. And then the, the other adjustment was um, planning block 30 uh, in Chapel Hill, just so that you could have a look of a, the option C, which seemed to be uh, the committee seems to have it had scored the highest based on the objectives and considerations. So this is kind of a modification or a, a build on it to, to show you an, an alternate 
uh, configuration for Chapel Hill, which it does bring Chapel Hill on the higher side, but it um, also gives the new, the new Northeast Area Elementary School some room to grow. It brings it, a, puts it about 85%. So, and as you recall, that, that site is very limited in size. Um, it's prohibitive for, uh, very challenging to put portable units and things like that on that site if it does get to um, a very overcrowded situation like some of the schools in this area are. So I have a question. Um, we had gotten this information about the new development, um, but is there an actual map, like the large map, is that available anywhere so that we can be looking at that? Because for me, that's a factor when we start talking about the Northeast and you know how much do we bring it down? Because <coughs> we've already talked about Vincent Farm having a lot of development, but mm -hmm. I don't know where that is that new development relates to the Northeast area. We may school. have we may have the plot of that because I know that we have generated a plot of that, and uh, if we don't have a plot of it, do we have a plot of it? Yeah, if we don't have a plot of it, then you can um, access it on the BCPS webpage for the for this boundary study process. You can pull up that map so on your on your laptop. Yeah, and we, we, I, we can help you find that on the laptop if you wanted to see that. So, um, okay, any other, um, any other comments about that or anything else in regards to um, what we've discussed so far? Okay, so now is the process of uh, nominating options. So you can see we have all, all six options up here. But um, what we'd like to do is we'd like to do the first step in this process is to see if there's any consensus on a batch of options that can be considered uh, for the recommendation vote. So what we'd like to do is, is, is give you some time to review your materials independently. You can talk with your neighbors and things like that as you do that. And after you have some time to really to, 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 to gather your thoughts, we'd like you to consider um, to suggest or nominate any option to be considered for the recommendation. And when you do that, you can, you can include any amendments to the options if you'd like. So if you like a particular option, but you really like this planning block staying here or going there, um, you, can, you can include that. You can say, I'd like to nominate this option with these adjustments. And then what we'll do is we have, a, um, we have handheld devices tonight. Uh, it's called ActiveVote. And everybody will then be able to, to uh, vote on whether the option is, is, is brought, is, is if there is a majority uh, for people to consider the option for recommendation. Now, one thing to make clear, we don't want you to get confused between your vote for the recommendation and the vote for the nomination. This is the nomination process, so really what you're doing um, is, is bringing forward candidates to vote for a recommendation. Um, Principals may not nominate options, but they can engage in discussion, and, and, so, and so no principals will have the active vote uh, particular, um, the, the voting uh, the software and handhelds for this particular process. Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, so we'll give you just a little bit of time to gather your thoughts on... Um, Oh, okay, so yes, the development map has been, we, it's posted up in the back there. We have that, that development map posted back there now. Thank you, Ms. Appler. Any questions about the nomination process before we let you uh, kind of gather your thoughts and think about that, and then we'll get into it? We'll hand out the handhelds in the meantime. Okay, well, I'll give you some time just to do that. We may turn the lights on for a sec so that you can look at things in, in light and not in a, a dark, uh, dark environment, and we'll regroup in a minute.
Um, did every committee? Can you turn me up? Did uh, did every committee member get their uh, little handheld uh, device? Did it, does any committee member not have one? Okay, so we're good. Okay, we have one over here that we need. Michael gets you one.
I'll give you guys about five more minutes to kind of uh, finalize your thoughts for the nom for nominations, and then we'll get to the get to the nomination process. Okay, um, okay, I think that uh, I think that we're ready to, to, to start the nomination process. Um, can you put the yeah. PowerPoint up now? And then advance to the next slide for me. Good. Okay, so with, when it, when as it as it comes to this nomination process, as I said, I'll I'll, I'll make, say it again. You can, you can nominate an option as it stands, as, as they sit, or as they are de developed now, or you can, you can pose, you can nominate an option with changes. And if, when, if you do want to nominate any changes to an option, please specify which planning blocks you'd like to, um, you'd like to shift in the, in the adjustment. And, um, and I can help you, you can point to the map, and I can certainly um, make sure that you're clear on which planning blocks we're talking about. Um, so, with that, uh, I'll open it, open the floor for in, any committee member that wants to uh, nominate an option for to be considered in the pool or in the candidates for recommendation. Again, this is not the recommendation. This is the uh, bringing the candidates forward so that you can vote on a recommendation. Um, does, does anybody want to nominate a particular option to to bring forward as um, a candidate to be considered for recommendation? Okay, so let's get uh, let's get a mic over here and so let's see uh, which who who okay you want to do it? I'm going with option C. I like it. It was attractive to me. I think that my neighbors and the people who live in my area would like it. So that's what I'm going with. Okay, so sh um, uh, so C has been nominated. Um, would you like to go ahead and vote on it now? Sure. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, uh, we're going to have get see if there's consensus to, to have C nominated. Now this is this is not a vote for C as a recommendation. This is a vote to, to determine if C is brought forth. Uh, if there's consensus to make it one of the candidates to be considered for recommendation. So as you as you can see here now, um, do we want to do the active active vote um, little test exercise first, or do we want to go right into it? Okay. So what you do is you vote either A, if you do want to bring C as a nomi as to nominate C, or you vote uh, B, which is, in, which is to not, d if you don't want C brought forward as a candidate for nomination. Yeah, yeah, and this is, a is if you if you select A, that that means that you do want C brought forward for the final recommendation vote. 
Anybody have any? Qu anybody have questions about that? Okay. Okay. So what we are doing is we're bringing forward candidates to be considered for recommendation. The result of this may be there may be some of these that aren't even voted on after this process for the recommendation. It may end up narrowing down if some of these don't get nominated. What we're trying to do is have you determine which options you want to bring forward to be considered for, for recommendation. And, the, and the, one of the main reasons of doing this is to make sure we capture any suggested changes that are, that are thought of, if you do have any of that, or take it in its entirety. So the vote that's on the, the, vote that's on the floor is to bring option C uh, as a candidate for the next phase, which is the recommendation vote. Anybody have questions about that? If you don't want C, if you do not want C to be brought forward as consideration for vote, you would, you would click B, which means no. If you do want option C to be brought forward as a candidate for voting in the next step, you would select A on your little clicker. And we could see here that shows which ones are yellow are the devices that have already s voted. So we do have a number of uh, committee members that are still thinking about it. Yep, there are three still that three still who haven't put voted yes or no to bring C forward. And after this, we'll see the results, so. Okay. Not everyone. Okay. Okay, we have one, one committee member who hasn't, uh, who hasn't determined yet Yes or no? Are there, have there any committee members not selected A or B yet? Oh, there's an extra device there? Oh. Then that would be the one. Okay, that's the one. <laughs> okay, so let's see, let's see the results. Um, Okay, so we have a, a large majority, a large majority, 83% of the committee did, did, did feel like C should be brought forth as for consideration. Okay, so C is one of the candidates that will be determined. Is there another option? Or, okay, let's, uh, let's get a microphone. Option F. Okay, so <laughs> option F, option F has been nominated to be considered for, uh, as a candidate for recommendation. So we're gonna do um, the same process, not yet, don't click, don't click yet. Um, <clears throat> when Mike says it's time, are we good to go, Mike? Okay, so just like we did with C, this, this is to determine if you wanna bring option F forward as a candidate to be determined, to be considered for a recommendation. Click yes if you wanna bring option F forward for a consideration as a candidate for recommendation and, and click B if you do not want to bring F forward as a, a candidate. Okay, so we have all of the devices have, uh, 
all of the devices have been, uh, you have, have been, the votes have been cast. And 70.8% of the committee uh, determined that F should not be brought forward as a, um, for nomination. The majority, the majority will, will, is what, if the majority vote brings it forward, yes. Um, okay, so, so far C is the only candidate that's been brought forward. Yes, ma'am, did you have, um, we got a mic over here for you. I know this isn't a popular one, but option A, and, it, and I say this because I have, I have to preface why. Um, it gives the most relief equitably to all the schools. It's the, one of the only ones that has some relief to two of the schools that don't get any relief after this option. And uh, I think it should just be considered. Okay. Um, so option A has been nominated to be considered for uh, the, the, recommend, the recommendation vote, which is the next step. So if you are, if you are ready to, uh, if, if you want to bring option A up for consideration for the recommendation vote, which is the next step, click A. And if you do not want to bring it forward for consideration for recommendation, click B. Yes, ma'am. One only. One. Yep, but they will. The board will see all of the all of the work leading up to here. But one recommendation will go to the board. And we have one committee member that's still determining uh, A, um, uh, if A should come forward as a candidate for recommendation. Okay. Okay, so 54.2% uh, of you, of committee members, thought that A was, uh, w is viable to bring forward as a candidate for recommendation. So option A will be uh, up front when you do determine, uh, do make your recommendation vote. So, so far we have option C and option A to be considered for the recommendation vote. Okay. So I uh, nominate option B. Option B is in boy, okay. So option B has been nominated. And um, yep, go ahead and do the, process, the same process. So I was just asked why. I mean, so for me, I think A, B, and C are the best ones. I don't like any of them exactly as they are. Um, but I think A, B, and C gives us the best options to work from to get to the best solution. So that's my thought on it. I think, you know, B is pretty um, spread out. We do have some overcrowding with the Northeast, so that would be where I would look at where we can make some changes. But um, Vincent Farm is at 89% there, so maybe we have a little bit of, if we kind of shift things to the right. So that are was my thought. Are there any changes to B that you think that, that, you, would cons that you would like to see? Because um, you can always do B with modifications if you feel it's viable, or you can That's what I would say, B, B with modifications, not B as is, but B with modifications. Okay, um, do you can you, you do you know which ones that particularly? No, I would just say it's a shift to the right because the northeast school is overcrowded. 
um, from the beginning with this okay. one. So looking at taking some, um, some of those planning blocks from the Northeast, and then of course that's gonna have to shift other schools. So it probably would be Perry Hall Elementary, Northeast, Chapel Hill, and Vincent Farm. <coughs> okay, um, in order for us to be able to, nom to nominate these modifications, we'd have to have um, s specific thoughts on which areas you may like to shift, like to adjust. Then I just go back to B, which just is B as it is. As okay. It is. Okay. So I know that so, so people have cast their votes, and you cast. I know that saw that you cast those votes when it was B as is. So I think that that's fine. I was going to say, if there were modifications, we would reset this and do it and do it again. But so this is still to consider option B to be brought up as a candidate for uh, nomination uh, for um, to be considered for the recommendation. So you can click uh, A if you do feel option B should come should be brought forward as a candidate for recommendation, or you click the button, the, click the B button if you think that option B should not be brought forward. See, we have one, still have one committee member who's determining, but take your time if you need more time. Okay, so all the votes have been cast to determine if B should come forward. And B has 54.2%. It's just coincidentally the same as the other prior ones. That's right? Okay, 54.2%. Uh, so the majority of you do feel like B should be brought forth for consideration for the uh, recommendation. So right now we have options A, B, and C um, as candidates for your, your recommendation vote. Does any other committee members want to provide any other nominations of any of the options that haven't been brought up or any, any of the other options with uh, modifications? And committee members are allowed to nominate more than one if they feel like they, if they feel like they, um, there are two of them that they'd like to nominate or however many you are welcome to do so as well. Um, are there, are there, is there anybody who's still thinking about, the, uh, about this, about one that they may want to consider to be brought forward for nomination? Okay, let's put a, a, a microphone to my have a huge reason but I thought maybe E. Option E? Mm -hmm. Okay. So option E and, and um, as as is, is that right? Okay. So option E as it sits is being nominated for consideration for uh, uh, to be a candidate for the recommendation vote. Option E. And you'll do the same process to determine if you want to bring E forth as a candidate. Take your time, we've got plenty of time tonight.
Okay, the votes have been cast. Okay, 87.5% um, of the committee feels that option E should not be brought forward as a candidate for the recommendation vote. So E does not make it through. Okay, are there any other, um, any other options or variations of options that any committee member would like to uh, consider? <laughs> That's right, there is one. You want to nominate D to be thought of? Okay. Do we need that on the record? On the mic? Uh, yep. Yeah. Can you go ahead and just <laughs> say it? Just so we don't leave it by itself, let's do D. <laughs> option D, okay. So option D will be brought, uh, or is up for vote now. D is in dog. Somebody left an iPhone with an Under Armour uh, case on it. Does anybody here have a, uh, an iPhone that they left at the table over at the sign-in sheet? Okay, I'll leave it over. We'll, uh, I'll leave it at this main table for now until we figure out somebody will come looking for it. Okay, so 79.2% of the committee have uh, show that have determined that no option D should not be brought forth as a candidate for consideration. So that leaves us with options A, B, and C to be considered for the um, for the uh, final uh, for the, your final vote. Um, let's see. Oh, is there a hand? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I would nominate option B with modifications, uh, and those modifications being moving PB30 back to Chapel Hill, and, um, oops, let me pull this up, and moving, I think it's PB25, I'm not sure, it's at the end of Cowanton and Route 7. Um, okay, 25 is on the east side of Callington. Yeah, the south side's already, the other side's already going to the new school. So just swapping the two. So uh, what did you want to do with planning block 25? Move that to the new school. To the new school. Swap the two. Okay. Planning block 30 to Chapel Hill and planning block 25 to uh, the new school. And I'll just kind of point it here on the map. Um, planning block 30 is right here, the, the larger planning block in between new, the new school and Chapel Hill. Okay. Planning block 30. One of the things to um, be mindful is that we'll create an enclave, but we'll create a satellite area. Yes. Um, is there a way to put the map on the screen by chance? Do they have internet connection? You can just pull up the interactive map. It's probably the best, quickest way. Uh, Propermap.com. 
slash BCPS Northeast 2017. Uh, Northeast. Uh, So that so those adjustments would create a satellite. Okay, let's get a microphone. It's only a satellite because of the way you drew, you drew the planning blocks out. The south side of PB30 is parkland, which could be divided off into a separate planning block. So it would not be it would be contiguous in that regard. Okay, okay, so the suggestion is to cut up, um, cut planning block 30 along, I see a stream here. Uh, yeah, Hatanago Park, it's the park right there, so you could park. Okay. cut that into the new school and it's not going to ever be, unless they put houses on the park. Okay, Which so cut the PB30 the and <laughs> leave the parkland in the new school. Okay. Oh yes, and there's a comment over um, at a committee member. Yes, ma'am. Hi, um, I'm just curious as to why you want to make this change. Like, what are the reasons? Uh, planning Block 30 has made a compelling argument with the traffic. I, I I respect what the transportation office said, but I, I run and travel in that area a lot and there is heavy traffic there and keeping that keeping that with us is keeping with the with the, uh, the rule 1280 using major roads as a dividing line Huntington Boulevard being about as major a road as you have around here short of Bel Air Road so we're keeping with the rules of using major roads as a dividing line and also addressing the traffic concerns okay, we have two comments I'm coming I understand their, their concern with going out on Honey Go, but we have an entire school that sits on Honey Go that is over capacity at a large rate, and all of those children cross Honey Go either left or right every single day, and all of the parents do, and all of the teachers. So if we're gonna make a concession for that reason, then we have a whole school we need to relocate. Um, I just quickly looked at PB25. Wouldn't they have to cross Honey Go to get to their school? No? What would they, how would they get over to the new school? Cowington to Joppa cross over Honey Go. So they would have a straight shot instead of making a left across Honey Go. Okay. I just, I just think P, PB25 is cl looks closer to Chapel Hill than PB30. I mean, PB30 is so close to the Northeast School. We have an another comment. So um, I was glad to hear the transportation person here tonight to speak about traffic. Um, so that was because that was a big concern that was brought up by PB30. But my second question was, or comment, I guess, was those same, uh, that same development, they're zoned for Perry Hall Middle School. And so that's already an existing route that they have to come out, make the right, and then they make the left onto Honeygo. So transportation already has things in place for the middle school, for those students to be able to go to the middle school. I would assume they could do the same thing for the elementary school. Okay, so as, uh, um, we were gonna, we were trying to get this up on the screen. Um, is everybody clear? Is, are the committee members clear on which where planning block 25 is, and where planning block 30 is? We want to make sure that everybody everybody's clear on what uh, what adjustments are being considered. Um, Is everybody clear now where planning block 25 is? Um, 
and where planning block 30 is, that's be, is being considered as an amendment to option B with the planning block 30 cut at the park land so that it would be contiguous if that planning block was cut in the zero pop area. Okay. Anybody not clear on that? On that, uh, the, the, what's, what's being proposed or nominated for consideration? Yeah, let's just go to the act, uh, back to the voting. Okay, so, um, so as I have it here, um, one thing I would add to this is cut planning block 30 uh, with the parkland. One second, we have a comment or okay. a question. Um, just to throw it out there as another possibility, if you do feel that planning block 30 belongs at Chapel Hill and you're looking to make the borders contingent but not quite, uh, planning block 18 and planning block 12 could move to the new school. And you could leave 30 at Chapel Hill. Okay, so, well, I don't want to confuse two nominations together. We have one nomination from a committee member. Um, we can do that one. We can do that nomination next. Do we, are we, are we you still want to uh, bring, bring forward this nomination or do you want to make any other ju adjustments that, based on the conversation or? Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll do that one next because that one doesn't fall into this nomination. So you can always nominate this with an, an adjustment to it at next. Okay. So the nomination that's on the floor right now is, to t is an amended option B that cuts planning block 30 by the parkland to chap and then sends that, the, the area with the population in it, planning block 30 to Chapel Hill, uh, which is where they currently go, and then planning block 25 would be assigned to the new school in uh, this amended option. So with that said, go ahead and uh, determine if you want to bring this forward as, a, as an option for uh, uh, consideration for the recommendation. Okay, so the amended option B uh, has 83.3% .3 of the committee um, voted no to bring that amended option B forward. So that one does not carry through. Are there any other um, suggested uh, modifications of options since we do have have looked at all or considered all of them um, to be considered did you have so one if we c if we did make a different sort of move and left planning block 30 26 and 164 all with Chapel Hill then planning block 18, 12, and 9, because we've connected 12 and 9 pretty strongly through this process, could go to the new, s new Northeast. And is this a build off of which option? Um, this is a build off of option B. Okay. So you're leaving the whole lower pocket at Chapel Hill and moving, shifting the upper across to the new school. Okay, so let's, let's yeah, let's make sure it's clear. So planning block B with you said pl uh, planning block 30 at Chapel Hill, right? 30, 26, and 164. At Chapel Hill. At Chapel Hill. Okay. 18, 12, and 9 to the new school. We have a question or a comment. 
Um, on the option B yeah. map up here, 18 is already at the new school. Okay, so there's a discrepancy on the computer. You're saying, can you, can you say that just so everyone can hear? I, am I seeing PB18 at the new school on option B on the Where map? Where is planning block 18? I'm seeing it right here. Oh, no, no, no. Planning block 159. Okay, where is planning block 18? Right, I got that. Okay. 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 So the um, so the um, so the uh, the the suggested change is I'll I'll point it out over here on this on this map. It's a build off of option B. So the area is planning block thirty. 26 and 164, which are along Cowanton Road um, and in between Cowanton and Honeygo, the, the nomination was to have those go to Chapel Hill uh, per the, uh, the nomination. And then in trade, planning blocks uh, that are um, east of um, the Interstate 95, planning blocks 18, 12, and nine, these three planning blocks over here would then become the new school. So it's uh, this, this, so this area in between Counton and Honeygo become Chapel Hill, and areas off of New Forge east of uh, I-95, planning blocks 18, 12, and nine would be um, the new school. That is the recommendation, or the, the nomination for uh, an amended option B. Do uh, you guys have questions about that? Yeah. Let's get a microphone. So <clears throat> if I'm looking at that recommendation, correct, options 18, 12, and 9, these, these roads would come out to Philadelphia Road, make a left, make a right, onto Joppa, pass right by Chapel Hill Elementary School to get to the new school. I'm sorry. Uh, we could actually come out and make a left onto Forge Road and come along the boundary line. We wouldn't have to go all the way down to Joppa. We, we, well, the buses have to pick up the kids on that road. I don't really know. You'd have to ask transportation. Um. Mr. West, could you help ans answer a question? Um, sorry to, to okay, let me just pick your brain. Um, it's the, we're curious about communities off of uh, New Forge um, and uh, Al Allender, actually off of Allender and uh, East of 95. How would they get to the new school? They currently planning to block 12 and 9 go to uh, Vincent Farm. Planning block 18 is in Chapel Hill. So if these were to go to the new school, would you know how they would go? And this is Route 7 right here. And then this is Cowanton. Would they go down 7? Um, these three. Planning block 18, 18, 12, and 9. The new school. Either 7 to Cowanton? Okay. Uh, he's he's going to take a take a look at it. One of the things to note about this change is that it does create um, it does have it's not an even swap in terms of the numbers of uh, the numbers of students. you you're, um, you have about okay. go to planning block. 
30, 26, and 164 has uh, 48 students in it. So that so if you look at planning block, uh, the shift to Chapel Hill, it'd be plus 48. And then these shifts over here have 133. So you'd be, um, so, the, so if you look at planning block, um, or if you look at option B, um, Okay, the new school's already at 104% in option B. So adding uh, you know, 70 or so is gonna bring it even higher. And as we know, the new school has challenges in terms of the, the site size for, for portables. So that's just something to be mindful of. Um, another thing to be mindful of is 18, 12, and nine have not been moved in any of the options. I don't think it's fair on the last meeting to throw a wrench in them and they don't even get a chance to speak up for their neighborhood or their community. Okay. Uh, I think every, is everybody clear on the suggested, uh, this, the suggested amendment to option B? Is anybody not clear on it that needs a little more clarification on it? And it's okay if uh, we're talking about moving three or four planning blocks a couple ways. Um, do we have to vote on B, or would that, op would that option be able to change to C? That way it would give the optimal relief that you were talking about, well, number for number. Well, B, B is already brought, okay. B is going to be a candidate gotcha. as it sits. Okay, thank you. This would be an, uh, this would be a, an additional option, a modified B. Okay. So it's not overriding what, what you've already decided. This would be, uh, so if this were, to, this were to carry, there'd be B, and then there would be an amended B, as we have noted. Any questions before we let you guys vote? Okay, so the active vote uh, is up now with this option to, uh, to bring forward as a candidate for recommendation. Okay, so we still have two can two uh, committee members to uh, determine if they do or do not want to nominate this this amended B option. Okay. Okay, ninety one point seven percent of the committee had determined no not to bring this amended option forward for consideration for recommendation. Okay. Okay, we have a question or a comment? Or a proposal, sorry. All right, so again, sticking with option B, um, move PB30, PB26, and PB164 to Chapel Hill. <coughs> um, and then that top part of Chapel Hill, PB 18 and PB 12 to Kingsville. Okay. So we're talking about the same, um, were there any other adjustments? Okay. Okay, so the, so the nomination uh, is to starting with option B Moving planning blocks 30, 26, and 164, and they're the, these are the same blocks in between Callington and Honeygo, um, uh, assigning them to Chapel Hill, and then planning blocks 18 and 12, which are over uh, the same area that we were discussing, not, not option, not, uh, not planning block 9, 18 and 12 going to Kingsville Elementary School in the north.
Um, so Mr. Mr. West was saying that uh, this area, if they go to the new school, they would they would have to go down Route Seven, and then they would um, they would go past Chapel Hill to uh, to to the new school in terms of the route. But th that option was was already. Um, I'm just following up on a question from the prior nomination. So we have we have on the floor planning blocks 30, 26, and 164 to Chapel Hill. Planning blocks 18 and 12 to Kingsville as an amended option B or a modified option B. Any questions about that before we let you guys cast your votes? Uh, it's a now. Now's your time to vote on this. If you want to bring it, um, if you want to have it as a candidate for consideration for the recommendation. I do. Uh, you just toggle to the uh, PowerPoint for me. Okay, we have two committee members who are uh, still thinking about it or uh, determining, or they think they voted and they, they hadn't yet. There's still a committee member who's, who's considering. Uh, device 14. Um, is still uh, up in the up for uh, to to deter to choose. Are there any committee members who have not cast their vote? Yeah. Is there anybody who needs more time to vote on this? Because there's one committee member who hasn't cast it. You don't have to vote necessarily. Okay. Is there a number on the back of those? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so 69.6% .6 of the committee had uh, in, uh, chosen to not bring forward uh, this amended option B. Okay. All right. So we're still sitting with options A, B, and C. Um, before we close nominations, are there any other uh, any, anything else before we move to the next step? If anybody does need time, you can raise your. Uh, you can <laughs> let me know right now, or we're going to move to the recommendation. Okay. So now is the vote on the recommendation. Um, committee members will vote for one of the nominated options to recommend to the Board of Elections. Um, Board of Education, I'm sorry. The active vote system will be used to record the votes. Um, principals cannot participate in this vote, so no principal has the active vote uh, uh, in front of them. And then we'll discuss the results once we see, um, once we see the results to see um, this, if there's a tie or anything like that, we can determine what to, where to go from there. Um, but the the uh, the majority vote that that occurs here will be the one that is brought forth as a recommendation to the uh, to the board. Okay, so the uh, the options that are up for consideration for the recommendation are options A, B, and C. 
Okay. And uh, we, you are ready, so you'll pick A for option A, B for option B, and um, C for option C. And this is the recommendation. This is voting on the recommendation. This is it. This is the final. This is the final vote. You could take your time. We have plenty of time. You don't have. If you want to think about it. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We we'll have time. And if you'd like, if you would like to make any comments about any of the options, if you're still thinking about it, or you want to make any comments about them, you can do so, and you're you could still change your vote if you'd like to. Um, go right now and push C and they pick A, can it, will it change? Yeah. So if you don't, you can push it again to make sure if you want, yeah. it'll, it'll, you know, you can change your vote at any time, A, B, or C. do have one committee member who has not voted yet um, so if you could if you if you have voted and you you know make sure that your button is pushed for the right for the right vote are there any committee members who have not voted who have not voted yet Another minute? Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, the votes have all been cast. Before we, before we finalize this, um, Now's your time. If you want to make any changes to, to your vote, now's the time. Otherwise, this is, your votes have been cast. Any other final comments or anything before we, uh, before we see the results? All right. Okay. So option C, option C received 58.3% of the committee's votes. And options A and B were, uh, were a tie at 20%. 20.8 percent. Um, so option C is the is the, going to be the recommendation that's brought forth to the uh, Board of Ed. Um, and I'm just taking notes here. Okay, and if we could go to the PowerPoint. Okay, so like like we like uh, like I had said, we are going to tell the story to the board, tell the walk them through the process and how everything got to your uh, recommendation that you brought forward. 
Um, I think you guys have done a, a fabulous job in this whole process. It's really, you've been a great committee to work with. I think that you are uh, an objective group and really thinking about what's best for all, all students. Um, the remaining options that did not get considered, these final options will be uh, shared with the board so they could see, um, to, so they can understand what, uh, what was being considered at the last, um, at the last meeting. And all, the, all of the work will be, uh, will be shared with the board and they'll follow it. Our next steps are uh, to, provide, to provide this recommendation on Tuesday, February 6, 2018 at uh, 6.30 p.m. It's at the main building, at the, um, the Greenwood Building E. It's the, if you've ever been to the Board of Ed's main, uh, the, their campus is the mansion on top of the hill. Greenwood Building's at the bottom of the hill. Um, there will be a board hearing also after the recommendation is made. Uh, where the public will be uh, able to share their comments with the board. Um, that will be Wednesday, February 21st, at uh, 2018 at 6.30 p p.m. And that will be the Perry Hall Middle School Auditorium. That's a public hearing. Um, committee members, you're not, ob you're not um, obligated to come to, you don't have to come to any of these meetings if you don't like. We do like seeing your uh, support. If you, uh, at, at the recommendation, it's always good to have committee members there to show your support for, uh, for the process. Uh, the board hearing is not as necessary. And then the board decision will be Tuesday, March 6th, 2018 at 6.30 at the Greenwood Building E. Uh, committee attendance is not mandatory, like I said, but you are welcome to attend. Uh, and please do so if you, if you feel, feel so. Um, yes, and I would like to just kind of open the floor for any comments or any th other things that you'd like to, uh, final remarks or anything like that that you'd like to make. I'm, I'm sure you've said this before, but is it like an uh, um, accept or deny from the board, or can they just go in and change whatever? Okay, as so far as the planning blocks and stuff. So it really varies from place to place when we work all over the country on this. Um, some school boards take the, the recommendation and they, and they approve it as is. Some school boards look at things after hearing the board hearing and hearing from the, their constituents, they do uh, make adjustments to the maps. It's, the board has the full power to make changes to your recommendation or to create their own from scratch. Um, but you know, this is a process that, that, that the school district does value and, um, and in the historically they have, they have really, uh, if they do make changes, they build on a recommendation that has been provided by the, um, by the committee. So if, um, I guess the, February 6th, the recommendation to the board, are, are there gonna be speakers? Can you get up and speak? The process is gonna be just like any board meeting. Um, the, the public have the opportunity to speak. They have a three minute window. Um, they, 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 uh, they put their, their name in a, in a little box and then the board will um, choose. Mr. Roberts, you wanna elaborate? So this process, what will happen on February 6th is Dr. Brown and I um, will present to the board, um, really similar to what was said, it will be an overview of this process. We'll kind of tell them the story of how this started, um, how you came together, the process, certainly that this was a transparent process, it was recorded, everything was online. So Dr. Brown and I go through all of that for the Board of Education and ultimately landing on knowing how many recommendations were made or how many maps that you had to vote from this evening, ultimately where you landed, and then making the formal recommendation to the board on February 6th. They certainly can ask us questions, and, and I would imagine they will, from anything they want about the process or anything that they have questions about they can ask one of us or both of us about. Then the board hearing up the street at the middle school is the community's opportunity. So that's when as staff were there, as you said, anyone can be there, but then the board will sit and as they have, it's usually three minutes, will come up. I'm not sure what the time frame will be, but board member or community can sign up and then however long it takes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, however many speakers come and sign up, they will get an opportunity to speak their mind to the board for that a lot of time. And then the board decision on March 6th is just, it's an agenda item. At that point, they've heard from the staff they've heard from the community. Um, usually Dr. Brown and I will go up again just to kind of refresh their memory, answer any last minute questions they have, and then at that point they will engage in conversation 
Um, it's same process as any more. Someone will make a motion, and then they have debate on it if, if they need to, and then they cast their vote on it. Yes? On the 21st. So on the 21st, the community has an opportunity to provide input in whatever shape or form they want to provide input to the board and then the board, th but it's not a conversation with the board at that point. They just provide their, you know, the board will sit. They don't engage in conversation with the community members. That's what I was curious. Right. How's the board going to answer these questions when they weren't part of this process? Right. So like that process, so if a community member comes up, provides their feedback, whether in written or verbal form. All that's just taken in. Right. And then at that point on the 6th, that's when and certainly between the, well, really at any time through this process, as a community, you can email the board, you can contact the board through the website. Through, there's right. ways to contact the board. So ultimately on the 6th, all of this past, four, well, at that point, almost six months is taken into consideration and then the board goes to their deliberations okay. and makes that a makes decision. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions about the process itself? Or Dr. Brown, was there anything I missed or, okay. Oh, so committee members, okay, what Ms. Appler was saying, committee members, you're certainly more than welcome to come and speak. Um, so as part of the community, you can come on the 21st down to Perry Hall Middle and certainly offer your opinion as well. Someone have a hand raised over? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. we have one right hand. Yeah, I was going to say I would encourage everyone in here to come and put their name in to try to be pulled because all it's going to take is a few parents in a certain neighborhood to be heard, and that could change the board's opinion when we've been sitting here week after week deliberating and making what's the best decision for the community as a whole, and they're coming out just for their own community, which, I mean, I can appreciate, but at the same time, we didn't sit here for months and weeks on end, you know, to have a few people come up in one community and, you know, roll over the work we've done. So to, add, to clarify that, uh, unless you wanted to add to it, to clarify it a little bit, on the 6th and on the 6th, February and March, during board meetings, that's when 10 names are drawn as part of the regular board meetings where you drop your name into a box at a board meeting and then the first 10 that are randomly picked out get to speak on any topic they wish. On the 21st, Everyone who shows up gets an opportunity to speak. So just in your kind of planning and, and which night, um, know that on board meetings, it's the first 10 that are randomly drawn. For the hearing, everyone who comes and signs up in that allotted time, I'm not sure what the allotted time is, then they will be heard. And that would be certainly inclusive of, as Ms. Appler said, inclusive of you, any of you who wanted to come to the board hearing, you'll get heard. Or if you want to kind of roll the dice on the top 10, on the six and the six. Okay. Any other process questions? Most, oh. <laughs> um, Matt, will you all be there at any of the meetings? I I am typically at the recommendation, so I okay. do, I do I do speak on behalf of the committee at the recommendation. Okay. And presenting that. Yeah. So what what Dr. Brown was clarifying for me was on February sixth, Matt does that presentation. Okay. So the board will hear from Matt as they have in the past. Okay. Um, they will hear from Matt, and we're there just as a resource. Dr. Brown and I are there as a resource. If okay. You have a yes, and that that's the meeting I'm typically. At. I'm usually not at the hearing or the decision. Because at that point, the board has, um, you know, received things. But I'm always there as a, re as a resource if, if they have questions. And I will certainly do my best to, um, you know, share the comments that have been made and, and do my best to speak on behalf of the committee as it relates to the, the work that was done here. Okay. Uh, to the, the point that was made earlier, you all have invested a significant amount of time in this work, and we're very thankful and appreciative of that. Uh, in the past, I've seen the board appreciate hearing from the folks who've invested that time um, and hearing what you think. So while we're happy to represent that, um, I think sometimes it's best to hear it directly. So thank you. 
Yes. Oh, we've got another back. Um, back here. So there was a board meeting, I believe, back in October, um, where the issue was uh, like school discipline, conduct, et cetera, and the board allowed time at that meeting for parents who had signed up to come and give, I guess, kind of their testimony, for lack of a better word. Um, and so I guess I'm just asking if maybe if that structure could even be extended to something like this. So instead of us having to depend on the lobby or the, the lottery for 10, because there's going to be lots of other people there wanting to have their voices heard, if a time frame or a slot could be set up for the members of the community or the committee who are here to be able to speak without having to participate in that lottery. <coughs> that's, that's the structure of the hearing. The, the hearing will be dedicated to this process. And again, everyone that wishes to speak will have the opportunity to do so. Uh, okay. Sign in once you've signed in. Uh, we have another, another question, one. Melissa. Do you have to sign in to speak when you walk in, or do you go sit, and then if you have something to say, you raise your hand? Like, how does that no, work? There's a sign in, because once you sign in, right. then who, whoever, whichever board member is presiding or the chair, um, Mr. Gillis, would be presiding, will have a name, a list, and then he just calls the names up. So you will have to sign in. When it's posted, when it's announced, okay. then there will be a time That'll say to sign up, come at, I'm just picking a time, 5.30, it, right. whatever that time is. Between this time and that time, to sign in, and then that piece of paper is literally given to the board, and they just read through the names. So I, I guess, like, to the committee members, you should just sign up, because yes. I feel like a lot of us are going to go in there with nothing to say unless something from other communities are being thrown out there that are, have been proved to be untrue, like the traffic or... You know, we might, there are committee members, we don't feel like we need to speak because we, we're coming forth with this option that we like. Sign up when you go in to speak, is what I'm saying. That way, you'll have a chance. Yeah, you'll need to sign up. Everyone, the whole community will need to sign up for the 21st. Let's just make sure we're clear. For the 21st, everyone who signs up in the allotted time will get an opportunity to speak on the 21st. Any other questions, process questions, or questions? Okay, well, you know, I, I, I know I speak on behalf of the staff uh, here and also myself. Um, I really want to applaud you all and your hard work and dedication to this process. As you know, it's not easy. There's pros and cons with any, any plan, and as you can see, there's not, the plan is not perfect, but I do feel like you guys have done a great job in providing a good uh, plan and recommendations to the school board. And we all thank you for that. And um, we hope to see you in, on February 6th and, uh, and, at the other, and, and still continue to be active as you have and commit in uh, your committed time to this process. And um, other than that, I hope you all have a great holiday and, um, and a happy new year. And um, congratulations, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.